right. those were our entertainment highlights. Yep. And from oh. entertainment <laughs> to nutrition. Yes. It's time for <laughs> us to talk about food allergies this morning. We're going to look into this. And it's a very important conversation because, mm. you know, a lot of the times we find ourselves, um, I mean, if you're like me, you want to try everything, you know, but mm, mm. not necessarily everything it may be good for you. So we're going to find out about food allergies, what causes them, what to do about them, and all of that. And um, <laughs> of course, yeah, Benedi Yadom, who is a state registered nutritionist, has joined us in the studio this morning to help us to get into this conversation. Of course, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. It's Fantastic. Great. Very well. Thank you. Monday. All right, so what do we need to know about food allergies? Okay, so food allergies or food hypersensitivity has to do with you attacking your immune system with what you are eating. So it results in you compromising on how your immune system is supposed to react or function mm. depending on whatever you gave your body through okay. food mm. or whatever you ate. And it is very, very, very tricky with it because even as of now, more research needs to go into it because what is causing Kokui to react might be different from what is mm -hmm. causing me to react. But um, then there are simple things to look out for to help you know that, okay, I think um, you can suspect this and then we'll need to ask for help from a health professional. Okay. Now, for some people, you can have this red patches on your skin. I've had this, I've had it this year twice myself. Mm. And it's, when it happens like that, you should know that you probably have taken something that your body is struggling with. For some people, it could be fevers. Mm. So as soon as they eat a certain kind of food, they feel feverish. Mm. You can have eczema. So if you have any mm. development on your skin or how you look, if it changes or it is changing from how we know Kokui to, to be as far as how your body looks is concerned, it should let you know that there is something probably going on. There are types. And then for the onset of uh, typical signs or symptoms, it can happen 5 to 60 minutes mm. after you have taken you something some. that your body doesn't recognize or the immune system is struggling with so mm -hmm. whatever attacks the immune system means that is probably a food allergy okay. and for people with asthma they are prone to food allergies mm -hmm. too so if you're somebody who is, who is asthmatic i believe that you should make sure you are getting closer to all the health professionals or some key ones because you will be eating a lot of times mm -hmm. so you need to get closer to a nutritionist or a dietitian if you are um, asthmatic too, you know that it has to do with your respiratory health and so you also need to probably get closer to a physician specialist or somebody who will help you as far as your, your respira respiratory health or your lungs are concerned. Do there are types of food allergies. Okay. I was uh, going to ask if we have food allergy testing, like proper yes, food allergy testing. Yes, there is rust. There is rust. The rust test, that's the radio allergoscopic. Mm -hmm. It's a, a mouthful. Okay. Radio allergoscopic public blood test it's called rust okay. r-a-s-t and we do them here in, in, in it, 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 it's 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 not common but i always mm. say that when you try with our bigger facilities last week i had to do endoscopy and yeah. it couldn't be done at any wow. other facility it's the kolebu the bridge hospital 37 military you can try them and i always say that once these three fail uh, sometimes it's difficult mm. where you would have to go mm. but then I've given the, the common ones you can look out for if you have skin this changes, skin breathing. changes and if you have asthma. And if I'll, I'll go through some of the signs. Once I'm done with the types, I'll quickly go okay. on to the signs and the severe ones and when you need to really enter the emergency room because mm. there is trouble yeah. happening. So we have egg allergies. Mm. There are mm. people reacting to eggs, fish, milk, peanuts. They are common. Okay. And then we have shellfish. There are some who will even react to a lot of seafood. So shellfish and soy. Mm. They react to soy. And then tree nuts 
and wheat. There are people who don't tolerate some of the whole foods we yeah. sit here and preach that are healthy and so it should be part of our mm. meals. So you need to, I, I believe that once a child is born, it starts from there. And even when it comes to, when you get to nutrition, we will know how to make sure we are preventing mm. some of these um, food reactions we end up getting later in life. So for si the signs and symptoms, digestive problems, there are people constantly bloating. Yeah. There are people constantly gassing. Mm. And the flatulence in some people can be too much. Mm. Or it's, they are passing gas mm. here and there. Yeah, down the ocean. And so... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to make sure if you have that a lot, <laughs> if you have that a lot, it should let you know that there are some disorders going on and that one can or more, mostly run into food intolerance. Okay. Uh -huh. it, it's, more, it's more than, it can be more than just a food allergy. You are okay. just not tolerating something, mm. especially with people with lactose intolerance. Mm, okay. They are not tolerating the lactase. Or the, the lactose because they lack probably the lactase or they have mm. minimal uh, levels yeah. and then we have swollen airways mm. okay so mm, if mm, you mm. have that too or hives you can be assured or it can let you know that something can be going on and it can be really life-threatening yeah. where you experience anaphylaxis which is a serious condition life-threatening it can lead to you going off or out and so we need to pay attention. And then we have severe reactions, abdominal pains, mm. especially mm. in babies. That one is called colic. As soon mm. as you breastfeed them, yeah. they are just so uncomfortable. They are crying all over. You've remembered, eh? Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's, it's very it's painful. It's, it's very, very phases. painful for oh. babies. They become very fragile. Yeah. And sometimes you can just be looking at them. You, you, you just cannot, you don't know what to do for them. And then we have mm. diarrhea indigestion setting in and i always say that or I, i'll say that indigestion happens when you make the smaller intestines work difficult for them because i would have to empty it into the larger intestines and that crossover is where the gassing and the bloating happens because fermentation has taken place mm -hmm. and then we have passing excessive amount of gas i've spoken about this leg cramps vomiting flatulence mm -hmm. um flushed skin rashes itching and when you see these ones I'm coming to mention, you need to go to the hospital, enter the emergency. Okay. Chest um, tightness. Sometimes you are struggling to even, because the supply of oxygen mm. to has been, it has been, has been mm. kind of compromised yeah. on. And then we have difficult breathing. So you are, you are gasping for breath. That should also let you know that your allergic reaction is something serious. And so we need, um, sometimes for some people, they may have tried antihistamines, they mm. may have tried corticosteroids, or they may have been given certain um, medications to kind of um, deal with it. But then if they say after certain days, if symptoms persist, you need to make sure yeah. you are rushing to the proper um, facility to receive um, health care. And then we have tingling hands, feet, and lips mm. when you have that oh. it's also linked to food allergies mm. and then throat swelling and this one is somehow a it's little dangerous. common when you have throat swelling because you took something because that one it causes a constriction or there's a restriction as far as your airways mm -hmm. is concerned that is an emergency and you need to make sure you seek help so those are the uh, the severe symptoms the symptoms the types you can have but for allergies it's it's family it's hereditary it or is. it's in the bloodline and so uh, sometimes it's you can't blame people much but when it comes to nutrition starting right with your child can help prevent it and once you know that it is in the family i believe that you doing certain things when we zoom into the nutrition i don't know if i should quickly zoom into it yeah you can um, yeah. yeah so when it comes to nutrition ebf or exclusive breastfeeding mm is a sure way to make sure you secure this child mm. for the rest of his or her life. Because once it's breast milk, nothing has been added to it. It is God-given. And we, you and me, we can't question. Science <laughs> cannot question what God has deposited in the human body to be a blessing to that little child. So for the first six months of life, every antibiotic, every medication, every supplement, every water, every food is deposited 
in the breast milk of the mother. And so it is highly recommended that all over the world, if mother is available mm. and there is no reason preventing mother from breastfeeding, breastfeeding should be done. You should make sure the breasts are stimulated for initiation to happen between the first, two, first one uh, hour to the first seven to two hours of life. It can happen. For some people, it delays because some of these things that needs to be done, like stimulation, is not properly done. Mm. And depression can set in the whole trauma of, okay, I was coming for SVD or spontaneous vaginal delivery and it ended up in a cesarean session can mm. also affect sometimes the, hormone le the hormonal levels of these mothers. And so it makes it difficult for breastfeeding to happen. But then I always say that as professionals or as people who know what to do, we need to make sure that the right thing is done for these mothers to make sure that initiation happens. It saves you a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, um, experiences like mm. being found, finding yourself in the neonatal intensive care unit or the NICU. It can help mm. to prevent neonatal jaundice, which later can can be very, very dangerous for the health, including the brain health of this yeah. child. So breastfeeding, very, very important. And then eating prebiotic foods like the leafy green vegetables. So I say that every leafy green vegetable peculiar to you. So Kokui, where you are coming from, which leafy greens are peculiar to you? My dad is a Nordna. Which leafy greens mm -hmm. are peculiar to them? My mom is a Khan. Which leafy greens are peculiar to them? The leafy greens I grew up knowing or eating, I have to make sure they are part of my meals. And then onions, garlic. Mm. I will say that these, they, 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 they make condiments, they make herbs, they make spices. They, 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 they are super foods. Onions, garlic. garlic. Ginger. Ginger is not here, but the two being part of your meals will go a long way to help you as far as if you have it, managing it. And then if you don't have it, preventing or guarding the individual from finding themselves there. And then taking live bacterial supplements. For supplements, I won't mention names. Depending on what you are suffering from, the kind of allergic reaction you are having it will influence me when it comes to me as to which nutrients or supplements you need to improve on and then eating some fermented foods as recommended by your caregiver and these examples again will also work with if i'm dealing with kukui your medical information or whatever is peculiar to you will help me know the kind of fermented foods to recommend for you, same way with if I'm dealing with Kirkwood, and then consider additional nutrients and some of the additional additional sorry nutrients um, that will help with your digestive lining. It improves on in, on the integrity of your digestive health. Vitamin A rich foods okay. as part of your meals okay. will help. We have. Um, Vitamin D rich foods, aside the sun exposure, there are some foods which can also help you. L arginine or mm -hmm. arginine mm -hmm. foods will also go a long way to help you. So making sure that you have the right um, foods being added into your meals. When you are starting your child's meals, when you are having family meals, you should prep ourselves. Once you know that there is a family history, being your grandmother, being your mother, or being your father, maternal or paternal lines, you need to make sure that some of these things are part of your meals as family so that you will know how to deal with some of these things when they show up. Great stuff. Fantastic. Thank you. Because okay. how do people get in touch with you? Okay, so you can follow me on Instagram at the Nutritionist Akosia, Facebook, mm. LinkedIn, Twitter, Nutritionist Akosia. You can WhatsApp me on zero two four three three five zero two zero six. All awesome. right, thank, thank you very you, much. As always, always a pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break, cooking some prawn, mm. mango, mm. something, something. I'm, I'm sure all some of the things <laughs> she mentioned <laughs> are in in what we're going to yeah. make today. You know, yeah. probiotics and and all of that, <laughs> vitamins and yeah. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs>